The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made us in your image and call us to share in the renewal of this world. Inspire us to seek and serve Christ in all persons, that the proclamation of your good news in our worship, in our words, and in our work may lead us into the fullness of your love, through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Peace to you and welcome to Christ Church. With this prayer and that welcome, I call to order or call from recess the 2018 Annual Parish Meeting of Christ Church Cathedral. We have several items before us. The first will be a report from the treasurer. There'll be a short time for, um, for responses, questions, should there be any. Uh, immediately after that, we will yield to the chair of the Strategic Implementation uh, Committee, who will then walk us through the work of that committee as in the past year, but especially since last September. That presentation will segue to a time of small group discussion. Uh, there'll be a word about how that happens shortly. But in, in the address to the parish, I noted that in fairly short order, in the next couple of weeks, this matter will be before the, the vestry for decision, the matter of capital campaign and specific objective. Uh, they will be on, the vestry will be on retreat February 2nd and 3rd, and so the feedback you provide in small group discussion will be important, important for them to hear and take into account as they deliberate. Following that, we'll come to a close, we'll close in prayer, maybe we'll sing the doxology together, and there'll be lunch served downstairs in Cheek Hall for all. So with no further ado, I yield to the treasurer, Dale Maxfield. Thank you, Tim. Before I get started in talking about our great year in 2017, I want to talk a little bit about what the Finance Committee does and what our charge is for the church. Uh, the Finance Committee provides financial advice and recommendations to the vestry, uh, checks budgeting assumptions, helps determine which accounts are to be used to pay extraordinary expenses, provides oversight of financial controls, and engages an auditor to detect accounting issues and procedural weaknesses. The committee does not set spending priorities. That is the responsibility of the dean and the vestry. I'd like to recognize the committee right now. Uh, Donald McKenzie, Hal Johnson, Jill Meese, Pete Stringer, Walker Matthews, Marie Stringer Yagel, Scott Hoffman, Trey Carolan is the vestry liaison, Timothy Kimbrough as dean, and Mark McQueen as business manager. Just a few of the key principles with which we deal with the in the cathedral operations, we seek for balanced budgets. We are cautious with debt, using it only to take advantage of unusual opportunities. We seek to be transparent as possible. Our reports can be found posted to the Vestry Bulletin Board each month after the Vestry has approved the report. In 2017, we had an audit conducted by Crosland and Associates it was presented by the Finance Com Committee by Damon Wynn of Crosland. Mr. Wynn reported that the financial statements were presented fairly and the changes in its net assets and its cash flows for years 2015 and 16 ended in accordance with the modified cash basis of accounting. The auditors did not have any recommendations for changes to our procedures or accounts. Now I'd like to talk a little bit and hit a little of the highlights for 2017. We had an outstanding year last year. If you look at, at this report here, on the left side is our uh, 2017 year, and on the uh, right side will be the budget, and we'll talk about the budget in a minute. The highlights on the income side, pledges and offerings ended the year $19,000 over budget, which is outstanding. Financial stewards ended with a positive variance of $28,850. And that gave us a total income of two million six hundred ninety-five dollars five five sixty-one. On the income side, that was above budget by thirty-eight thousand three ninety-seven. On the expense side, uh, we had a favorable variance in salary and benefits of twenty thousand five thirty-eight. 
Uh, we had a, a favorable variance on administrative support of 28,140, and lay ministries had a favorable variance of 15,583, and that left us uh, below budget on expenses of 43,022. That gave us a positive surplus to end the year of $71,876. Like I said, a very, very good year for the cathedral. On the, on the budget side, I want to talk a little bit. This is the fourth year in a row that we're going to have a balanced budget, uh, which is something that the Finance Committee is very proud of. There are a couple of big drivers that are on the income side. Uh, pledges, we've increased to 3% to million nine seventy five five oh eight, and that's due to our uh, outstanding pledge drive which was overseen by Jill Meese and Marie Yeagle. So kudos to them. And our parking increase, our parking income is going to increase this year by about $30,000. That's a 29% increase uh, and that's due to raising our monthly parking fees that we, we charge. On the expense side, the other big drivers, there's a 2% cost of living for all cathedral staff, and there's a 10% increase in our Christian education budget. So overall, we have a 2% increase in, on the budget for 18 for income, and we have a 2% increase for our expense side. And that's to give us a balanced budget of $2,729,583. which is there on the right-hand side. The next thing I'd like to talk briefly about is our endowments. I think that's the next slide. As you can see, from the 2016 to the, the end of 2017, we're at 12508921 That's a $1,163.64 increase. And of course, that's due to the stock market rising. Of course. The inverse can happen if the market drops, the, those will drop accordingly. But we had an outstanding year for 17, and uh, hopefully we can keep that momentum up through 18. Does anybody have any questions for me concerning the 2017 results or the 2018 budget? I know we ran through pretty quick, but I'm trying to allot time for the res rest of the presentation. No questions. Just linger just a moment longer to see if there are questions for clarification. I want to add my voice. Oh, please, Joe. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I'd like to next ask Tyler Yarbrough to the microphone. Last year when we handed off and, uh, and created the, the implementation committee, Scott Hoffman was at the helm. Scott carried us through uh, to this fall. He's been involved for quite some time, both in the imag uh, imagining of strategic objectives, the plan itself, and then in those early, the early days of implementation. Was very grateful for the very smooth handoff provided for from Scott to Tyler and Tyler picks up today with the, the presentation on the work of the Implementation Committee. Thank you, Timothy. So I'm Tyler Yarbrough. I'm currently serving as the chair of the Strategic Plan Implementation Committee, and I'm, I'm here to provide an update on our work to date over the past year or so. So following the adoption of the Strategic Plan in February of last year, the vestry approved the formation of a committee, the Implementation Committee, to shepherd the process of implementing the strategic plan. Throughout the process, the committee has kept in, in the forefront of our, our minds the goals that the parish articulated in the strategic plan that was adopted. And in particular, these are the themes that are always at the forefront of our minds. Building and enhancing the Christ Church reputation as a place of welcome and hospitality, a place of solace and joy committed to worship and witness, to know each other better through fellowship and the power of small groups, to build and support the Christchurch outreach and pastoral care programs. These themes provide the lens through which we conceive our work in implementing the strategic plan. The committee has formed four working groups focused on the objectives set out in the strategic plan. 
There's a finance team that is convened by Ed Burgess. That team manages the budgetary aspects of implementing the strategic plan, and you'll hear from Ed later on in the meeting. There's a communications team convened by Anna Noser to ensure that you all are kept apprised of the work that's going on by the implementation committee. And there's a program committee that has been convened by Sam Bessie. And that team works with the parish commissions and committees to develop the program initiatives that were envisioned by the strategic plan. Uh, the dean touched on those in his address, and I'm gonna ask him to come forward now and, and speak on those again briefly. Just very briefly, you see there on the slide there on the left that some of the, I think, big accomplishments for the, the program of the parish, the, the Share Our Life program. I think we have about 25 plus parishioners who are bringing in another 25 vote in one way or another to, to a church on Sunday mornings. The, I listed a number of the offerings for small group activities both here at the church and in neighborhoods and homes. I know, for example, the effort made last Lent to see that the Dean's Forum was principally centered around small group discussion, responses to reflections. We're trying to do more and more of that sort of throughout the work uh, of the parish. The parish-wide fellowship events, it seems to me we, we uh, for every two we, we schedule, there's a desire for two more. It's something that's, I think, really meeting a need and a hunger. The October feast was among the, those events that was most successful. So likewise, the parish picnic that started off the academic year this past time. I, I think a, a, a big move, but also representative of the ongoing commitment to seeing that our uh, outreach work doesn't stand still, was we expanded our Room in the Inn offerings this year to include uh, a, a night for women. And I'm, I'm grateful to the, all of those who volunteer and work with the Room in the Inn ministry and provide for that. Thank you. So each of these accomplishments and many others reflect a lot of the program initiatives that we all collectively articulated as goals that we wanted to see carried out in implementing the strategic plan. The last working group that comes under the umbrella of the implementation committee is the Campus Concerns Committee, which is convened by Michael Hasty. This group has worked to assess the state of our current campus in light of our strategic plan objectives. Um, it has also to undertake an initial steps toward developing a plan to both renovate and expand our space. This group has been working with an architect to begin the process of envisioning a new master uh, plan for our campus. Bergen Dossett from the Campus Concerns Committee will be here in just a moment to show you some of the conceptual drawings that have been drafted um, by the architect that we are working with. In conjunction with envisioning this new master plan, the committee has assisted the vestry in uh, studying the feasibility of launching a capital campaign to realize these objectives. In preparing for this potential uh, capital campaign, uh, the implementation has, committee has been working with an individual named Bob Hotz. He uh, works with the American City Bureau, which is a consulting firm in Chicago that specializes in uh, supporting initiatives of this nature for schools, churches, and non-for-profit entities. The plans that Bergen will present are a draft. Um, they present us with the vision for us all to ponder together as a parish. In this vision, we hope, the Implementation Committee hopes, and each of its subgroups, hope that you can see the way that that your hopes that you have for you and your household for this church can be realized in a, in a um, master plan concept. Bringing these types of plans to a reality will require a focused parish-wide campaign. It will require our parish to come together, all of us, to do something wonderful for ourselves, for our future, for our children. I'm gonna turn it over to Bergen now. said, I'm representing the Campus Concerns Committee, and I want to first start by introducing them. Uh, Dean Timothy was critical to that effort, as well as Reverend Matthew, uh, both were on it. Ellen Wright, uh, Michael Hasty was the convener, Mary Herbert Kelly, and Ken Sheasley, and I think all those people are here. So. Uh, the 
key, and I think this has been touched on two or three times, we uh, took the, all of the input from the, strategic, from the strategic efforts from the last 18 months and distilled it as a basis for the plan for three key pieces, fellowship, youth ministry, and outreach. In doing that, we did several things before we brought on HBRA, who was the master planning architect that we've been working with over the last nine months. First, we, took, we created a scope document, including all the key things that you just uh, saw, as well as a detailed program requirements for the church in the future. Secondly, we looked back at the campus assessment report, working with the facility committee to determine what the priorities and urgent near-term needs would be as part of this plan. Thirdly, we convened extensive sessions, including the architects who came from Chicago, to meet individually with groups, end users, staff, constituents, who represented each of these major pieces of the project. And fourth, um, fourthly, as uh, Tyler said, we met with Bob Hutz, who was the American City Bureau who's working on the development. So all those things inform kind of what we did as we proceeded. For the architects and contractors in the room, you guys will appreciate this. We looked at multiple plans and schemes, in fact, at least 17 different plans before we came up with what we're going to show you today. Renovation and expansion of, of existing facilities, including the annex, was always an option. Another option, bullet <coughs> two, was all new construction, and then perhaps bullet three, a hybrid of new and maximizing existing space. Strategic plan priorities, again, you've seen this slide over and over. Fellowship, youth ministry, and outreach. Fellowship meaning a, a larger, more uh, warm gathering space for the whole congregation. This was a big theme from the strategic plan. Youth ministry, pulling the youth out of the 810 building currently meeting in the basement and bringing them back, back to the main campus in, a, in an accessible and well-lighted space. And then finally, outreach, which includes room at the end, certainly wayfarers and all the key ministries that we continue to build as downtown groups. Design priorities. Access from all sides of the site. So we are blessed to be at the corner of 9th and Broadway. Arguably, and as we talked about in the last year, some of the most valuable property in the city. So we need to figure a way to access, not just from the tra traditional Broadway side, but from 9th and even from the back in the end. <coughs> Visibility, curbside appeal, more transparency. The church is a late 19th century structure. It's, the beautiful architecture is, is a blessing in one sense, but also it's a little bit foreboding. It's heavy masonry. You don't see a lot of glass and transparency as you, as you walk by. Importance of all program components, again, trying to weigh all the priorities in multiple phases and the program pieces. Central point of visual, entry and visual access. Right now, most people arrive through parking lot A and, and address the receptionist here. You'll see a little bit of expansion and improvement on that idea. Meaning, the traditional, still the main priority is the entrance from Broadway. With this scheme, you're also going to see a much easier and on-site access from 9th Avenue. <coughs> Fellowship Hall, the cornerstone of the new construction, which you'll see in, in, uh, on parking lot A, with a kitchen and an elevator to reach all levels. Outreach youth, classrooms, Cheek Hall. We're looking at Cheek Hall for an adapted reuse of additional classrooms as we take some of that space and refurbish it or put it in the new construction. The parish hall remains, that two level from the traditional structure here will remain and be renovated. Administration and music will continue to be on the third and fourth floors. So just to orient you, can everybody see that slide? Okay, so here, this is Broadway, this is Ninth Avenue, this is the 810 building where the youth currently this is the annex that fronts on 9th Avenue. This is parking lot A, parking lot B, parking lot C. And the Southern Baptist are here. As you guys are well aware, about a month ago, they imploded the building, the old Lifeway campus, which is right here. 
Not the Holiday Inn, but the Brussels Sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> the Holiday Inn will not be included to my knowledge. <laughs> I'm going to tell you one more thing. So, if you look at it, this is roughly the property line, and it, jigged, it kind of jigs back like this. But this will be key as we talk about the discussion. Downtown code permits us to build right up against the property line if we so choose. This is an initial sketch. So you guys will recognize, obviously, the original cathedral. This is the building that houses the, the parish hall and then a little bit of expansion. This is all new construction in here, as well as what would be the fellowship hall and several other spaces. This is one of two or three ideas. This is a view from the back. So this is a view from the north. This is 9th Avenue. So right now, as you know, you can drive. If this would be roughly in plan where the annex would be. But now you can drive and you see the slope down, which is existing. And this would be one of the new main entrances here, which is at grade and would accommodate um, accessibility handicap parking. This is a view from the west. So if you're staying at the Holiday Inn Express, this is what you would see. <laughs> so this is Broadway. This is the, the existing church. The new construction will be set back so you can get a, a clear view of the historic church from an oblique angle. This is a retaining wall. And here is the lowest level. One scheme has this as youth. This could also be potentially other classrooms, room at the end, what have you. So this, is, this again will be the at grade entrance where you can enter from the back. I want to go back. There is still a primary entrance from Broadway here, but there is no parking anymore. So you would walk through a courtyard to get to this entrance, and we'll look at that in play. This is a second scheme. So again, looking from Broadway, looking from the federal courthouse floor. So in lieu of what you saw before, which was the triangle gable roof, which was more e echoing this, this would be a flat roof. So this would be a little bit less of importance as you look at the cathedral. Again, in plan set back, so as you approach from the east, sorry, as you approach from the west coming east, you would have a clear vision of the side of the historic. This is the plan. Now this is the lowest level. This is what we'll call ground level. So this is not the nave. This is the current level of Chekhov. So this is the former site of the annex. So this scheme, the one that we're kind of leaning towards, would remove the annex. And this would become all parking. And as you approach the church, you'll come in here, and handicapped or accessible parking will be right there. Staff parking as well. You would come into this main entrance, which would be visually accessible by the receptionist above. And we're going to talk about this, but this is kind of the, the main spoke of the plan, which is anybody coming to the church from the upper level would come, would also enter this area, but from this level, the only entrance, entry would be here. This would be part of the outreach room at the end and support space, including a small kitchenette, storage, what have you, all along here. The, in this scheme, we're looking at the youth here, accompanied by this courtyard with a series of accesses for recreation. As I said earlier, downtown code would permit us to build right up against this property line, but we're making the value judgment to set this off about 20 feet. Refurbishment of classrooms, but existing space in the in the cheek hall. This will become the children's catechesis, potentially, or maybe some other uh, education facility. So, filling in that grand space with two additional classrooms, refurbishing the others here. Go back. If you guys are reading this. This is the existing kitchen, which will be converted to storage. The key to this is a brand new elevator, a much larger elevator that would service all four levels and a new escape stair. 
So again, part of this kind of central spoke, if you will. Okay, sorry about that. All right. This is the main entry. This is the main uh, floor level at Broadway. So this is all new construction. This is the existing nave where we're sitting right now. This is the parish hall, which will remain a double volume space. Lay vesting, the former wheeler room would become, be converted to lay vesting. New men's and women's restrooms on this level. Again, the elevator and the escape stair for access both up and down. Key to this plan is the new entry from Broadway, which would require um, handicap access ramp but this is the point of security or welcoming where the receptionist would sit. He or she would have an access visually either through cameras or be able to look down to the lower level here where you would be entering from that, the main level, the ground level. This represents the fellowship hall and we're gonna see a, a configuration of potential uses here in a minute. A new commercial kitchen, storage, and kitchen storage. One person likes that, that's good. <laughs> All right. Uh, coat closet, again, another men's and women's restroom. But as you, as everybody knows, as we exit from some of the services, this, this hallway would remain, but then open up into a larger space here to either dispense to one of the upper floors or lower floor or to go into the fellowship hall. This is one configuration for the fellowship hall, individual round uh, tables with chairs. A second, more in a banquet style for big parish wide events. Uh, I forgot, Michael, or 320. And that can expand or contract depending on the configuration. And thirdly, a classroom situation like a presentation we're having right now. So in this case, where we are with the plan, this would be the stage and everybody oriented this way. Access to the kitchen there and then various accesses along here. In addition to the fellowship hall, the interior space would be a terrace that runs the full length of the parish hall, which would have a series of French doors that would access this. And if this were perhaps more of a glazed wall, the view would always be of the historic church from the west elevation. So we're keeping the historic church as much intact as possible. This is the second level. Again, major changes would be here in the new construction. You see the elevator again, the escape stair, mechanical space. This would be a lot where the administration of the clergy would be. In this plan, this would be a double volume space, so a grand fellowship hall. Double volume space in parish hall as well. So the scale would be roughly the same. This would probably have a little bit of a higher ceiling. And then finally, the music remains on this floor, the top floor. Again, new elevator, new escape stair, mechanical space. And just a reminder, this was the previous scheme, the first scheme we saw, which is the Broadway elevation as you approach the historic church. Okay. Now for the not as much fun part. <laughs> um, with all great plans, things cost some money. And when you're talking about a budget for a capital campaign, what you're recognizing is sometimes you have to spend a little money to make money. So that's what we're gonna talk about here is what may be on tap for that with vestry approval. So let's see if I can do this right. Um, 
One of the things that we decided from working with Bob Hotz in the earlier strategic planning process it was that um, we needed to find uh, whether we were ready to do a capital campaign and we enjoyed working with him so much in that process that we deemed it to be essential to keep his services for going forward and he has been invaluable. So that would be one of the things that uh, we'll be continuing to pay for. Also we recognize that our parish infrastructure, our staff works hard doing what we do now. And so to actually provide the infrastructure for a campaign, we need to beef that up a little bit. Not exactly sure who's gonna be involved with that yet, but obviously there's an additional accounting function. Uh, there's the matter of keeping all the various parties involved with communication and tying that all together. It's a big job. So we'll be some uh, staffing up there. Uh, the conceptual drawings you just saw, um, you may be surprised to know weren't free. And so <laughs> we've already paid for those. Um, the hazardous materials assessment that the Dean referred to in his State of the Parish address was something that was needed anyway, but it certainly was gonna be needed before we started tinkering with uh, anything with our physical plant. And then of course, when you're running a capital campaign, um, you have to get the word out. So there'll be events, there'll be publications, there'll be social media, and that doesn't come free either. Um, we have conservatively estimated, and I want to say conservatively, I would be very surprised if we exceeded these numbers, an expenditure in the first year of a campaign of about $231,000. Uh, the following year would be, of course, a lot less, about $140,000. Uh, for a combined total of around 372,000. I know that seems like a lot, but um, what we're planning to do is borrow in effect from our operating reserve to get the program started if approved by the vestry so that uh, we can get started. And then as monies come in from any capital campaign, the, the loan, if you will, would be repaid first before it went anyplace else. Um, and we never anticipate that we would get to that big a draw because by the time we start spending s some of the money, some money will already be coming in. Um, so the recommendation from the consultant was that uh, he thought we could raise about $6 million. Um, that is not a totally surprising number given uh, that the rule of thumb we're told is usually about three times annual pledging support. Guess what, it's right about there. Uh, getting back to the costs, uh, they work out to about 6% of the estimated um, goal for a campaign. Uh, we are told that that is a very tightly uh, run, efficiently run ratio to work at and so that's where our proposal stands. Any questions for me? Well, thank you. Cindy Anderson, who's um, uh, one of the main estimators with the local construction company here. And based on a narrative, which assumes that we want the quality of what this church deserves, which would mean include the crab, apple, crab orchard stone and the limestone or precast. So all in, when you look at soft cost, meaning design fees and uh, FF&E, furniture, fixture and equipment. So when we build the, the space, we have to furnish it. And the construction, it would be between 12 and 15 million dollars. 
I want to I want to emphasize that this would be a multi-phased roadmap as part of a master plan. So if we only built the new construction, we could isolate that cost. That's a good question. Um, we would please repeat the question. Uh, uh, yeah, are there any plans for sustainability or lead um, lead components? And, and to explain, lead is part of the American Building Council, which is determines the level of efficiency or sustainability for a certain structure, and there are various levels. Uh, that's a good question. We would strive to do that. Un just inherently because we're in an urban setting with access to public transportation, that helps a lot. But we look at highly efficient um, mechanical systems, electrical systems, water reuse, that kind of thing. But good question. Yeah. Let's take a few questions, please. Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, accredited professional for building design and construction. So we will absolutely be incorporating sustainable uh, attribute. Questions of clarification. We're going to take a few minutes to do this. We have one right here. <laughs> and, I, and I should note that there are microphones on either side. Design, you're right. It, I don't believe it was a priority in the in the early program. So, through this strategic process, I think working with the youth and the stakeholders, we determined that that was not something that we would do. It was named in the process early on, cl very clearly. But as things shifted out, and as the strategic plan implementation committee met with architects and sort of stakeholders in the program, it did not rise to the top. take space away from the central courtyard, you mean right out here, and moving it to the west side of fellowship hall. Okay. Um, and moving it to here? Because if, uh, I think the Stingles own the surface lot that the, the Holiday Inn Express has a long-term lease on, 
they, if this were conveyed and somebody wanted to come along and develop it, they could build right against the property line. So if they did that, we would literally have no exposure windows on any of those levels there. That's why we've got about a 15 to 20 foot back setback. So the central courtyard is not a garden, really just a... It, 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 it is a courtyard, mainly hardscape, because it will have to include the, uh, let me go one, it'll have to include the, the accessible ramp, but it's mainly, unlike the scheme we did 10 or 12 years ago, it's more of an urban courtyard space, you're right. The question is, there's no plan to put a column barrier. I don't think that's been ruled out. That has not been ruled out. In fact, came up in the presentation to the vestry, and the vestry was keenly interested in seeing a future iteration of these plans include an outdoor column barrier. So, so we can look at that. Maybe one or two more, and then I think we have a small group task. But uh, one voice here and, and in the back. So right here. I, I just have a So the question is, would we envision using the parish hall still for wedding receptions, funeral receptions, what have you? Um, yes, but also we would have a much bigger space in the fellowship hall. So either one of those, yeah. In the very back. Uh, one of the hopes is that if we... Excuse me, the question is asked. Thank you very much. <laughs> The question is asked to what extent is the diocese involved in guiding or signing off on plans that we make uh, or, and or supporting us uh, financially. And th there is a hope that an arm of a capital campaign committee would have as a, 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 a field the city, the region, and the diocese. They would be both informed about the uh, project and uh, asked to support. There will not be support from the diocesan budget and there will not be specific oversight as to jot and tittle uh, of the plan from the diocese either. Uh, there is broad cooperation in terms that we let the, the, the uh, diocesan offices know this is proceeding. And if there's to be debt involved at any point, and no one has talked about that, a, a diocese does need to sign off on a project that would incur uh, uh, debt. Is that, is that helpful in the back? Thank you. Maybe one more, Ellen here, and then we're going to go to our small groups. I can clarify the question about the youth uh, common space. This was talked about at length. Uh, with the leadership of the youth uh, as well as with the architects. The scheme that has been shown that's color-coded uh, is one of three possible uses for both new space and Cheek Hall, a renovated Cheek Hall. One option for Cheek Hall is to have it be for the youth with the central area being a common area for the youth. Uh, the, there is a large youth gathering space in every scheme we have looked at and just know that there are a number of ways to reconfigure square footage within what is being shown. So this is one of several options. Another prominent option for using Cheek Hall is to put music in Cheek Hall and to put, say, for instance, the youth on the third floor. Um, the other comment I might make for the elevations is that the gabled roof uh, is a different <coughs> floor plan scheme than the one you're looking at. The floor plan scheme we've been shown that shows a complete build out of the second and third floors necessitates the flat roof. The gable roof option uh, goes with a different uh, but related scheme where there's not a complete build out of the second floor. Um, so again, this is all flexible. Um, the youth space has been given top billing for our conversations. And the garden space, to answer Mark's question, um, 
Timothy answered the question about the columbarium. The garden space can, it's shown as hardscape primarily there, but in other iterations, we've talked about it as being primarily green. So that too is, uh, is flexible. Thank you, Ellen. Tyler. The, that will de depend in part on consensus, the will of the vestry, and also how the parish responds finally with respect to an appeal. point, as um, the dean alluded to, we do want to have some small group discussions. The implementation committee and the vestry in particular would like to hear your feedback on what you've seen and heard today. So um, vestry members with your packet, could you please stand up? Each of you has been given a number to organize yourselves into about 15 different groups. Um, so, this will be an interesting task. If everybody could find your vestry member with your numbered group. Um, but before you do that, we are asking that you focus, what? we're asking that you focus your attention on two very specific questions. Does the work of the Campus Concerns Committee address the objectives that we outlined in the strategic plan? what hopes can be realized for you and your household through this presentation and design for the future. A survey is also going to be sent to you by email if you don't feel like you, this is a good opportunity for you to express yourself and you want to provide something in writing for the vestry to consider. But the vestry will certainly be taking into consideration all of the feedback that you provide today and through this week as they consider the next steps for a uh, potential capital campaign and further implementation of this plan. Yes, so when we send the survey out, there'll be a link to this entire presentation, um, and, um, but not a, there, there's not gonna be able to be a link to the drawings. However, every vestry member that, with a packet has a copy of the drawings for you to continue to look at when you break into your small groups. Would love to assign areas of the nave yeah. for the groups to meet. Uh, and I'm just going to walk sort of around. If we have that 15 groups, ones will be here. Two will be in the near corner right here, just beyond uh, the concrete cross. Threes in the far corner by the back door there, leading out into the corner of Ninth and Broadway. That's three. Let's put four in the very back by the columbarium, by the, the stand. Five in the back in this corner over by Matthew. Let's put six over here in this corner by the parking lot and Broadway exit. Let's put seven in the corner of the, the sort of choir stalls over here. Eight in the, in the corner closest to the baptistry. Then we're going to go nine up front right here. Ten in the middle. Eleven. Twelve. Let's put thirteen and fourteen up here and 15 in the chapel. We will call discussion time in 20 minutes for a final prayer and some directions for lunch and what follows for the next two weeks.
three minutes, three minutes remaining. One minute. If I could have your attention very briefly, I hope that these conversations begun in small group I hope that these conversations begun in small group will be recorded by the one who's there with the packet and the plans, and also that you'll stay for lunch and continue these conversations with your friends over lunch. Two other notes for the morning. Please do not neglect to cast your ballot in the vestry election. Polls will, will remain open until lunch is concluded, or maybe lunch is served. And then secondly, please know that some of the, the, sort of the detailed dive into these plans, we will devote time, the Dean's Forum, over the next two weeks to continue a closer look uh, at the plans. Uh, but please know what you've spoken about today in small group, what you will perhaps yet have to discuss in uh, small group time is something that will be of great help to the vestry as they deliberate in the coming weekend at the annual vestry retreat. Very grateful for, um, for your time here with us this morning. We had, thought, extraordinary attendance at worship and at least on my watch, the greatest interest in an annual parish meeting uh, by your attendance today. If you'd stand in place where you are, I want us to sing one verse of O God, Our Help in Ages Past. I'll, I'll line out the, the verses for you as we go, lest the third and fourth lines be less familiar. But as we sing it, please, please keep in mind of those who stood where you stand right now in 1829 with the First Church, in 1892 as we moved to this church also mid-century in the 20th century, when the decision was made to dig out Cheek Hall and expand fellowship opportunities there. Also, when vestries made prophetic, prophetic decisions to purchase the building that is now our parking lots A 
and as also now our parking lot C. Without those decisions and without those courageous steps out in faith, we would not have be having the conversation we're having right now. It's our turn. It's our time. Uh, let's sing, O God, our help in ages past. O God, our help in ages Our hope for years to come. Hope for years. Our shelter from the stormy blast. Our shelter from the And our eternal home. And our eternal home. Let's add an amen in parts. Amen. Bless y'all. Enjoy lunch. Thanks to everyone who was here.